Hi everybody, Ali from Potent Probos here. In this video, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to take a look at something from the perspective of the home designer or maker. We've all heard that 3D printing can be a lot cheaper for making certain types of objects, but I haven't really seen anyone put any hard numbers on that. So that's what I'm going to do in this video today. So the test case I'm going to use is an idea for a toy that I had, which was inspired by the Articulating Butterfly, which has recently been featured on the Thingiverse page. I'll put a link to the butterfly in the description down below. So the toy that I came up with was an articulating top with arms that print in place. So basically it prints in two pieces, the main body and the arms, print as one, then you print the handle, and then you press them together, and that makes the top. So let's take a look at how this went from my brain to prototype, and how much that would cost using different manufacturing techniques. Here you can see the top designed in SOLIDWORKS with the articulating arms in action. I thought the articulating arms would make for a neat effect when the top was spinning. These arms dynamically change the top's moment of inertia, which I thought was pretty neat from a physics point of view. I wanted the top to be easy to print, so there are only two parts that you have to print. The main body and arms, as is shown here, is one, and the upper handle is the other. Note that What's shown here is the 2x scaled version of the top. Assembly is as easy as press fitting the handle into the main body. Note that for the scaled up version, I did have to use some epoxy to secure the handle in place. I'll put a link to these SDL files for the top in the description down below. And here's some video of the 1x and 2x tops in action. Okay, so let's set some ground rules for the comparison I'm about to make. I want to look at how much it would cost for the home designer to go from an idea in their head to a working prototype in their hand. For manufacturing the top, I'm going to compare 3D printing versus CNC machining. I think these are the most viable options for producing a working top of this complexity. Tops generally need to be symmetrical and well balanced. So I think that rules out carving something of this complexity by hand out of wood especially for me. Now, I'm not going to go into any detail on what CNC machining is, so if you don't know anything about it, there's lots of resources on the web, so I'd take a look there. So how am I going to get hard numbers to compare how much it would cost to 3D print versus CNC machine the top? Well, when ordering a CNC part, the machine shop generally gives you a quote so you can see how much it would cost. There's a company called Protolabs, which has a very automated workflow for ordering CNC parts. So I'm going to go ahead and have Protolabs quote what it would take to machine the top. I'll leave a link to their website in the description down below if you want to check them out. So let's go ahead and do that and then take a look at their quotes. Here's the Protolabs quote for the main body of the top. Note that due to limitations of the machining process, the top has to be split into three parts that are machined individually. So here you can see I've selected ABS as the material, quantity of one, and their standard lead time. And you can see that the price for this is $227 just for the main body of the top. Now I'm going to look at their manufacturability analysis, which tells us how well they can machine this part. So this shows areas they won't be able to machine, and so they're having trouble getting into some of the corners there. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with how much of this they can actually machine. The quotes for the arms and the handle look very similar. And these are much more standard looking machine parts, so they didn't have any trouble with the manufacturability of those. And just keep in mind that we have to buy a quantity of 8x of the arms, so that adds some cost there. Okay, so let's total up the cost to CNC machine this top out of ABS plastic. From the Protolabs quote, it's going to cost $535. Imagine spending that much money on the first prototype. What happens if you want to make a small change or iterate on the design? Another 500 bucks. For 3D printing, the cost is pretty easy to estimate for the home designer. This assumes you already have a printer and just need to pay for the cost of filament. <clears throat> so for this, the small version of the articulated top, which is the same as I quoted for the machining, it will cost me about one dollar in filament to make this. Now, I knew the difference was going to be pretty big, but this was still really staggering to me. Yes, I know that it doesn't include the cost of the printer, depreciation of the printer, servicing cost of the printer, etc. But heck, with that $500 you're paying, you could buy a whole new printer. And that's only for one design iteration. 
There's always a lot of talk about how disruptive 3D printing is for the home designer and maker. But it was really interesting to take one of my designs and see how much it would have cost me to make if I didn't have a 3D printer. So I hope this makes you guys feel a little bit better about saving all that money on prototyping and making your ideas and designs come to life using 3D printing. What do you guys think about this comparison? I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Please be sure to check out the other content in my channel. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Now go print something potent.